Welcome back, everyone, to another Hot Toys review. This time, we're going to be reviewing Hot Toys Suicide Squad Harley Quinn from the first Suicide Squad movie. Hopefully, Hot Toys will make a Harley Quinn figure for the second uh, Suicide Squad movie by James Gunn. But only time will tell. This was actually one of the second most wanted Hot Toys figures that I wanted when I first started collecting Hot Toys figures. The first one being the Heath Ledger Joker from The Dark Knight. That was definitely the first Hot Toys figure I think I saw, and that was the first one that I ever really wanted. And that's what got me into collecting Hot Toys. And then this was the second figure that I wanted. There was just something about this version of Harley Quinn from the Suicide Squad movie that really caught my attention. But I just thought this was such a cool character design, the way they reinvented Harley Quinn in modern day, using modern day clothes and style. I thought it was such a creative way to reinvent this character in such a realistic way. And I love that it's with the colors and everything and how they came up with, you know, explaining the different colors. I thought it was really well done. And so I just felt like I had to get this figure. Now, this isn't exactly what the figure looks like when we first opened this up. I opened this figure up probably a year ago or so, several months. I can't remember. Usually have more of the wrist accessories in here in these areas that I already have on the figure. The jack would be right here wrapped up. And that's about it. So let's take a look. There's the first look at Harley Quinn. And now let's look at the accessories. So these are all the accessories that come with the Harley Quinn figure. I got the special edition. I got lucky on an eBay bid um, to get the special edition because this one's pretty rare from what I understand, which meaning this is the edition that comes with the uh, hammer mallet accessory. The other ones don't. Um, so why don't we start with that one? Uh, I shouldn't, she didn't really use this in the movie, but you know, it was like a brief glimpse of it, but the detail on this is pretty amazing. You got some nice texture and weathering, and this is actually 3D, not print. There's some 3D like chips in the wood parts of this mallet. There's writing that you can actually read on this. So yeah, this is a nice bonus accessory. And then of course you have the famous bat which also has writing on it. Very detailed, not made of real wood, plastic, but designed to look like real wood. Now, maybe they could have done a little bit better with making this look like a real wooden bat. Of course, a real wood would have been really cool, but then again, who knows how complicated and difficult that would be. But yeah, you have all this different writing that you could technically read if you wanted to. And then you have the purse that she steals in the movie. Got a metallic silver look, not die cast, but it looks like it could be, I suppose. Uh, I got a chain, which actually came off. I wasn't careful with this figure, so I had to glue the chain back on right here. So I would say be careful. It doesn't open up, even though it looks like it could. And that would have been a nice bonus. Um, and then you have interchangeable wrists, uh, wristbands says yes sir on them and you can exchange these for the uh, spiked wristbands that she would normally wear and then you have the pistol revolver that she comes with we got some nice details on this it says uh you can of course revolve the barrel here that says love and hate on it and you can actually push this out. And there's bullets painted on the inside. And this spins and yes, it can come out. So be careful not to lose that. I almost have a few times. My only thing is with this is like, it can fall out pretty easily if you're not careful. So I would always just make sure to secure the pit. The hammer doesn't pull back. Usually they would with a hot toys figure, but Still, the amount of detail on this, the intricate detail on this is quite amazing. And then you get a random brick, which I actually like. I like that. It's cool for a diorama if you want to make a diorama, which I did. Um, you can add this to it. And a lot of people will say this is such a random thing to include, but I like it. And then you have all the different hands. You have a pistol grip hand without glove with a ring on it. And there are details on the hands. And then you have the pistol grip hand with the glove. 
just a standard bat holding hand, it looks like. And then you have a wax gloved hand. It looks like writing on the fingernails. But it says love. It spells love, actually. Hard to tell on camera. I don't know how they do that. Um, and then you have the pistol or a bat holding on gloved hand. And then more of a holding the other side of the other end of the bat hand right here. And this figure also comes with two quick reloaders for the pistol. You have sculpted and painted bullets on there. And you can put these in the gun holster, which will be shown later. Pretty cool details for how small these pieces are. They don't actually fit in the pistol revolver, but they're just kind of a neat thing you can pose. Here you have the Margot Robbie Harley Quinn head sculpt. And I think this looks really spot on. I think this looks like Margot Robbie. Uh, it has a lot of texture and detail. I mean, that's amazing how they're able to get this much detail, this scale on the ear. Even with the slight redness on the end, it makes it look real and the earrings and everything. Amazing how they do that with the tattoos and all that stuff. The makeup running down, all of that detail is just blows my mind how they're able to do that. Some people don't like how it's a constant screaming head sculpt. And I, you know, I, at first I disagreed, but now I do agree after having this figure for a while. I wish that they at least included one other head sculpt that was neutral like smiling or something like that with the mouth closed because this does get old after a while. And then with the eyes looking to the side, you, and you can never change that. That makes it hard to pose. It limits your posing options. And it does get old after a while. So that's my only complaint. I think the head sculpt looks amazing itself in terms of likeness, paint work, everything just looks great. I just wish, you know, kind of like the new uh, the Peacemaker one, the Peacemaker figure, I wish... I'm like that. I wish they had two different head sculpts if they're going to do a screaming head sculpt like this because you have it gets old after a while. It's really cool at first, then it gets old, and then you don't have any options in terms of posability. You're limited. So, and another thing is if you're not careful, these come off. I mean, they articulate, but mine broke off. And so I had to, like, the, uh, the peg part broke off. So I had to glue it back. The other accessory that you would put on the figure is the neck is uh the neck band necklace and yeah quite a bit of detail on there uh, has that metallic shine to it and the neck is a kind of a rubbery material i think so you can kind of uh, bend it a little bit but not too much not like a not like other figures out there so now onto the figure herself. Uh, you have just such a presence, at least for me, this figure has a lot of presence. Um, just like I said, the colors, the way the costume design is, that's why I got this figure. There's just so much presence to this character. So we went over the head sculpt before in terms of the detail. Um, there's a lot of skin texture that's kind of hard to see unless you have the lighting quite right. If you adjust the lighting, you can get different looks for the head sculpt. Lighting is everything when it comes to making these figures look real. And then moving on to the shoulders and chest area, you have this jacket, you have the pistol holster right here, which is all sewn together in different ways. And this is removable, the jacket's removable, the shirt. Uh, you got a lot of stitching work on the jacket, which is really cool. Um, really looks good, actually. And then the stitching work on the back is really impressive, too. I mean, think about how long it probably took to do that. I don't know how they actually make this. I hear they make a lot of this by hand. So just imagine how long it took to do this. It's pretty amazing. That's what gives this figure more higher value for me. And then the pockets, which are not really functional, but they look like they are. And then you have like a zipper, a J for Joker right there. The zipper doesn't work, but it's cool how they included that right there. So a zipper that looks like it works. And then you have these wrist gauntlet spikes, which are actually kind of sharp. 
this bracelet itself is actually fragile. I cra almost cracked one of them when I was trying to put it on. So I would say be careful about that. But it's nice because the jacket and these wrist pieces here hide the joints. So that's pretty cool until you take the jacket off and you have to find a different way to hide the joints because the shirt doesn't quite go low enough. And then after this shirt kind of gets worn out after a while, so I'll be careful on them. You got nice stitching up here and then you have a printed words right there, which is all accurate to the movie, including the holes, all of that's accurate. You have the belt, which is uh, I think a mixture of pleather and plastic. You got tattoos. Belt continues. And then, of course, you have all of these details. You have more tattoos on the thighs here. This material is movable, but it's kind of fixed onto the legs. So I could probably tear pretty easily. And it hides the knee joints, which you can see from certain angles. And you can kind of move the fabric as you wish to try to hide the knee joints even more. I don't know what material this is. It's like a rubbery type material that they use. We can still see through the tattoos. And then onto the boot designs here, just standard sculpted rubber plastic like material. Pretty nicely done. Lots of details. One of the major complaints I have about this figure is the hands. They have always been a major pain to get on and off. I always end up breaking the part that connects the two joint sections together and then I have to use pliers to get this out. That's why there's a bunch of scuff marks on it because this is just too tight of a squeeze for all of these joint pieces. And then this always comes off. So I, yeah, that's a major down, downside to this figure because you have to almost damage the figure to change the hands out and take the jacket on and off and all that stuff and change the look up. So that's a really big downside, especially for the price that was paid for this figure. So once you remove both hands, then you can proceed to remove the jacket. Kind of tricky because it's not quite sewn all the way. You have some wear and tear that can happen with repeated removal of the jacket. So that's just something to think about. And you can do this look that she had in the movie when she just didn't have the jacket on. Like I said, this is already starting to come out. Hair piece here. I'm going to have to glue that again. Uh, but yeah, you can do that look. Of course, you have the joints that you can see, but you can try to hide them with the shirt. A little bit. They have more tattoo details on the arms, which is accurate to the movie. Not on this arm. And then you have stitching on the back, and then you have this gun holster, which is also removable. And then you holster the gun just like so. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that come, the figure also comes with two extra, I guess, clip, quick clips for the uh, pistol here. So quick reloaders, and they can fall out very easily. I almost lost one of them. And so you just put them in the gun holster. Some of them are more loose than others. It comes with two of them that you can put. And yeah, just be careful. Those can fall out and they can lose them. But yeah, it's really cool that they included that. So in terms of articulation, starting with the head sculpt, you can move the head forward and back and side to side, 360. Kind of limited on how much you can move the head. The neck is slightly flexible, but not that much. In terms of the shoulders, you can move them up, the ratcheted joints up to about there. And then forward and back, 360. The elbows are standard, uh, kind of standard 90 degrees. You can't really move them that much. Move them even back a little bit. The hands always tend to fall off like that. That's why I'm not a big fan of them with this particular figure. But you can move them quite a bit. 
360 and kind of diagonally a little bit. There's ratcheted on there. There's actually some articulation with the between the stomach and the chest. You can turn to right about there. Can't really go, you can go back, but not too much forward. And then in terms of the waist area, um, you can move this up quite about to there, the leg about not quite 90. Make it move it back. The thing to keep in mind is you're going to damage this fabric the more you do that. And then the knees can go about 90 degrees back, not too much forward. And then you can adjust this fabric to hide the knee joints. As far as the feet goes, yeah, it can kind of move them a little bit, but not that much. Like it allows some flexibility, but not a great deal. So in terms of my overall review of this figure, I think this is probably one of my favorite Hot Toys figures that I own. Uh, not my all-time favorite, but definitely up there in the top three. This was my Holy Grail Hot Toys figure. This is one that I was looking for, looking for a good deal for a long time, and finally caught one on eBay. Because um, this, this figure came out before I even got into Hot Toys collecting. And like I said, I think it really just comes down to, I love the character design, the costume design of this, you know, just the reinvention of this character. I think this is also just an interesting character, well played by Magarabi. And so, yeah, I think that's really what drew me to this figure. Um, I'm not a huge DC fan, but like I said, I think just all the details and presence of this Hot Toys figure is what drew me to it. And yeah, so there's just a lot to this figure. Um, and really, that's the just for the, the, the major negatives for me are that the hands are just the biggest pain. They're the worst Hot Toys hands I have out of all the Hot Toys figures that I have. They're the only Hot Toys hands that I just dread having to work with because they, they just come apart so easily. They come apart at the joint where they're not supposed to come apart, the joint itself, and then... You have to use pliers to get the joint out to replace the hands on both the hands and the the wrist sections. So that just damages the figure. It makes me not even want to mess with the hands at all. It makes me not want to do different poses with without the jacket any which way with different hands or different wrists, uh, bracelets. So that's just a major downside for you know a pricey figure. These figures aren't cheap, and so. That's this is the only figure I really struggle with with the wrists. I'm not sure what it is about it. Um, and then unfortunately, uh, the the material for the legs uh, can become damaged with multiple posing, even around the knees. I'm starting to see some damage is starting to happen. So yeah, you gotta be careful with that, and it makes you really not want to mess with the posing too much. Uh, and then I guess the other things is uh, I'm surprised I didn't do double jointed on um, the elbows but then again I guess it makes sense because then you would see the joints more but then again why not just do a seamless body because we know companies can do that now so unless maybe putting the tattoos on that would be difficult I still think uh, maybe it could have been a possibility especially for a figure like this um, the head sculpt is amazing I think the likeness is spot on looks like Magarabi only complaint is I wish they had a, at least if they're going to do a screaming head sculpt, to have a second head sculpt available. That's a neutral expression or a smiling expression. And if you're going to do the eyes like that, why not make them posable eyes with a purr system? Why not, you know, like other Hot Toys figures, have the eyes where you can move them? Um, that way, at least you can have options with that. And other than that, I think everything else is pretty good. The hair, unfortunately, one of the pigtails broke on mine so i had to glue it back and so now i don't really want to mess with it anymore because it already feels like it's about to come off again so that's kind of unfortunate again for the price you're paying for this figure the, the positives are the head sculpt is amazing i love how every different part of this figure is kind of like removable in some way because it just gives you more flexibility because certain scenes she didn't have the jacket on or she did same with the wrists you can interchange those so it just gives you more options and it's realistic. You know, you can mix and match figures if you want. So it just gives you way more flexibility. Um, and a lot of toys figures are like that. So that's definitely a big positive for me. Um, other than that, I think the details are just amazing on the accessories. Uh, comes with 
more accessories than you would expect with this character. So that's good too. I wish more Hot Toys figures would come with accessories like that. Uh, and yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, top three figure for sure. Holy Grail for me. And uh, highly recommend. Let me know what you think in the comments below.